Crossfire Legion is a newly released RTS game set in the universe of the popular FPS Crossfire. In this video, I'll be talking about the competitive multiplayer of the game, as that is what I do around here. I would say it visually gives you the feel of Command and Conquer games, while mechanically it feels like StarCraft 2, but at a smaller scale, sort of like Halo Wars. I can certainly dig the direction, though I do wish you could make slightly bigger armies. The advanced units take far too much supply. Look at this tank here costing 15. With the 200 supply limit, you'll not be able to make more than 13 of these. I was pretty impressed that the game is launching with replays, spectator mode, ranked matchmaking and leaderboards. Well done Blackbird. So many RTS fail at delivering a decent feature set at launch. The quality of life features for controls and hot editing are also in a good spot. I am very happy and see a ton of potential here, as all this means the devs don't have to waste post-release work on what I would say are fundamentals. Only weird thing is that leaderboards are split into continents even though the matchmaking is global. Please add a global leaderboard tab as default. As of launch there are three factions to pick from, each based around a commander, three per faction. They provide two call-in abilities, such as bombardments or calling in mercenaries that tunnel to the target point. The usage of these powers is limited by a total energy resource that you can't regain. You also have free choice of what units will be available to your faction. I'm talking about essentially deck building similar to Age of Empires 3. All the options are unlocked from the start, so there is no grind to win or pay to win element here. Not to say that your choices don't matter though. Anyways you can customize your loadout of two infantry units, two or three vehicle units and two or three aircraft with alternative units to replace the defaults. Sadly, other than their units, there is no significant gameplay difference between the factions. What I mean is they don't really have a core faction mechanic or different tech tree structures to set them apart. They do however have some unique abilities on the bases and supply buildings at least. In terms of economy, it's extremely simple. You have two resource types, each with a simple resource node to assign workers to. Essentially, minerals and gas. The workers will physically enter the nodes like they do with gas in StarCraft. I have to say, this is just too simple for me. At least with StarCraft's minerals, you have some minor considerations for worker spreads due to distances and maximum efficient workers per crystal. Plus, the workers are always exposed. Anyway, let's just write this up as a personal gripe that doesn't matter. Now here is the part that does matter. There is a worker limit indicator of 10 for the basic resource node and 5 for the tech resource node. The problem is that they only really support 8 and 3 respectively. What on earth is going on here? And why would the game be released with such a noob trap? This is literally two number changes in the UI. I spent my first bunch of games wasting 375 resources in each base until I was advised in Twitch chat about the problem. That's an instant loss at equal skill levels. Yikes. Next up, I'm about to get harsh about balance. I would typically be very lenient, but this game was in early access for a long time with knowledgeable RTS players advising the developers and even ESL tournaments were held. More than enough resources to get at least the first 10 minutes into decent shape, right? Apparently not. Check this out. Long story short, there is only one viable strategy. Any RTS where that statement is true is simply not worth a self-respecting competitive RTS player's time as they will be doing the same thing over and over and won't be able to express themselves with a unique playstyle. You saturate your main base's material node with 8 workers and send worker 9 to build an expansion. On smaller maps, this worker can grab a cycle of fuel first. Next, we build a supply structure, train 2 workers for fuel gathering and saturate the expansion's material facility. We will want to build a total of 4 barracks, the timing of each depending on whether you are being poked by an attack or if there is a proxy. Now print the basic infantry unit like there is no tomorrow, especially would recommend the jackal with the blacklist faction using the stalker commander. Once you have a few out, get their movement speed upgrade and just keep printing and adding supply buildings. Once you have the fuel for it, you can get the workshop to get the global infantry upgrade. That's it. That's the strategy. You show up with such a powerful spam at the enemy base that there is no way for them to have any higher tech units out, such as factory ones. 
Look, they would first have to get to tier 2 and then build a factory. A building you'll destroy in a few volleys. You'll also be calling in your slicing ninja power and these tunneling mercs. The only way to stop this is to also print basic units. A proxy rush, I guess, can threaten your expansion, but workers are relatively capable of buying some time. Plus, you always have the ninja dude to help your defensive units. So, you cannot tech, you cannot be greedy, you cannot turtle, and proxy rushes are still risky. Just print tier 1 units and slowly tech and add more bases. This is the game. This is not an experience that I would recommend to any of you at this point until there's changes. Go play campaign or one of the several casual multiplayer modes if you want to have fun. Like I said, I am being very harsh about this. I like the ideas this game is going for and I will handpick a bunch of good games to cast for your entertainment. All I'm saying is the developers need to change the core RTS game to allow for divergent strategies. Rush should beat Greed, Greed should beat Safe Play, Safe Play should beat Rush, while Fast Tech and Standard should occupy some stable middle ground. This is just not achievable with long research times and production buildings needing to be upgraded as well for tech options. Not while workers are pumped out in 7 seconds or the 10 second production time of most basic infantry. I am really looking forward to seeing where this game goes in the future. As of making this video, I don't see any point in hosting tournaments however. It would be a waste of my money and result in nothing but infantry printing games. However, should the balance shift to a healthier, strategically diverse meta, I would be very open to doing so, especially if the publisher is willing to help with that. I am a lot more affordable than ESL and would actually bother to cover the matches. I might even consider adding the game to my RTS esports project Metaplace, which you should totally check out. We host seasonal leagues and show matches for Age of Empires 4, Age of Mythology, Halo Wars 2 and Spellforce 3 over there. And we already have hundreds of videos on the YouTube channel. All links are in the description. Like I said earlier, I'll grab a few replays from the Crossfire Legion community and cast them shortly. Subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when it happens. 